Should have played someone other than the Necrophage. Um, but we need some more units for this army. Uh, and we're running negative dust, so we do need to fix that. I hope no one got disbanded while I wasn't paying attention. Um, we can slow growth here down, I suppose. Or production. Slow production is fine. Um, because we are unhappy, ah, we're facing negative production modifiers. Let's see, let's go and spend emeralds, get us dust on trade routes. I don't think we have any trade routes. If anyone who's more familiar with this game wants to tell me what trade routes are all about, um, I'm very curious to know. Wine, we don't have enough of that, but we can go and use a boost for dye. That's more influence, a modest amount of approval. So that didn't help with our dust problem. Uh, once we finish that road, uh, it's going to cause us upkeep that'll also eat into our dust. Alright, well, we can at least hit zero. That's probably fine. Okay, let's go and explore Teal's lands. No, no, what we should be doing is healing up our people. Alright, so let's... This guy's fine. Um, this guy will head north to pick up some reinforcements, and then we'll go and move on uh, these two teal territories here. Your empire is going bankrupt. Yes, that's bad. Alright, Neroin, I want this place to grow, since uh, we are getting some fantastic science out of the deal here, and we do want a burrow to get over to the wizard stone. We'll go. We're unhappy now. Do I have anything that will fix that happiness situation? No. The dust refinery is going to be finishing, so that'll be good as far as our dust goes. Okay, so trade routes. Um, if you build it right away, you will automatically develop trade routes. Trade routes uh, where you have an alliance with another major faction, but we can't. Uh, because of our unique faction, the Necro, um, but we can also have internal treasures apparently. It's a good source of dust for a large empire. Okay, so hopefully once we finish uh, the right of way here, we'll have, uh, we'll fix our little dust problem. But in the meantime, let's see, yes we do need a Palladian extractor, let's see, right over here. Better than the settler, in fact I should probably just Delete that settler queue. It does seem like the, that the production that goes into um, a project does stay forever, even if you leave it in the queue like that. Alright, so that's cool. The following actions. If, oh no, we sold the armory, army of Ishmalar. Sold Forager in Ishmalar. Huh. Okay, so where is Ishmalar? So we had a unit in here, he was sold. Oops. Um, we are in positive dust return now. Alright, so that's what happens if you uh, run into negative dust uh, and your treasury runs out. We're healing up pretty quickly here. Um, and maybe it's because we're close to this watchtower. So here, plus 15 health regen from Watchtower, but how close do I need to be to the Watchtower to receive that? Um, well, let's just wander over this way. We encountered another minor faction, the Geldurus, and they have the Ice Warg. This is a cavalry unit, doesn't have a lot of defense. Deals a decent amount of damage, has a decent amount of life. Speed 6. Sweep Strike Back. Hmm. Alright, let's get a little closer to the Watchtower. Alright, so, Larset says, uh, who's been giving me this advice about trade routes, uh, says that the roving clans really make use of the trade routes. So they're sort of like the 
uh, Morocco of Civ 5, or maybe even the Venice. Um, so if I really want to figure out uh, how this whole trade route system works, I should probably go and play the roving clans at some kind of, uh, at some point. Alright, so let's just hide out here. We are building some more units. There's a forager coming in a turn. These guys, let's see, titanium, glass steel, ladian, some attic structure online. What other cities need projects? Uh, a deacon. An event you? Sure. Where? Right here. Alright, so we're gonna get all of the age 3 resources online soon. Okay, Borough Street's next. Yep, that's all according to plan. We've grown, and I do want to grow these guys. I think. Are we happy again? Is that why everything's good? No, we're currently unhappy. Uh, so, we do have that minus 20% detriment there. What can I build that will make these guys happy again? Um, we're about to build the borough streets out to the wizard stone. Let's repair some of these villages. That'll be fine. Our dust is still positive. So if I were to spend a stockpile while I'm unhappy, do I waste food or is it only to food production? Um, and what text can I grab that will help with my happiness? I don't think I need to sacrifice any of my citizens in my science city. Let's see. Approval from Bread and Circuses. Alright, so that sounds like it'll do what we want. That's a minus 25% uh, expansion disapproval. I'm assuming the cities that I've captured also count as expansion. We'll just hang back here until we're fully healed. And uh, yeah, we'll keep that around. Okay, winter started. We're running minus 70 deaths per turn now. That's probably not good. Um, we'll have to shift people over to dust. Now we're about to finish that right away. Got some units here. Um, I am happy to keep them around, but I will go and bring my army over. Um, so each army, oh nice, these are the roads, um, and we're getting better movement even in winter. Uh, each army costs a certain amount of upkeep, since I am worried about dust right now, I'm just going to send my hero to go pick those guys up, rather than have them form their own army. Let's go maximum dust. We don't need food during winter, unless we're starving, which we are. Take three of these guys, shift them back over. So if we shift everyone over to dust, do we fix the negative dust situation? Uh, dust refinery would be fine here. Empire Mint is cheaper. That up first, probably the dust refinery. I do want to finish those borough streets. Minus 17 deaths per turn is fine with our current stockpile. Alright, that's good. And this guy. One more turn, he'll be fully healed, and we'll get moving. Cannon fodder tech in tier 2. Let's see. Cannon fodder for dust. Names and volunteers. 
cannon fodder. Okay, so this is a unique tech for uh, the Necrophage. Ah, and that would save us a whole bunch of money. Alright, so let's forget about bread and circuses for now. We'll get cannon fodder first. That'll be in five turns. That'll help with our dust upkeep. And we'll swing this guy over to the capital to pick up some uh, reinforcements for his army. Alright, so we're mostly healed up here. Let's do some more exploring on this second teal territory. the right of way finishing for us. I guess we did steal everyone over from production. Alright, let's um, have you pop over here. And alright, so what we'll do is show off the upkeep on a new army. So there we went from 17 to 21 uh, negative dust per turn. And we'll go and have you join up with these guys and we're back down to 17. Alright, so this army is now full. We've got two necro drones and a proliferator and a forager. So I am curious to see what the proliferator does. We'll head this guy um, back on over to the teal war. Already passed by here. The right away is done. And that did get us a little bit of gold. Um, so, the Red Way does have an upkeep, but apparently it's also getting us money. Now, is there a trade screen? Manage armies, diplomacy, marketplace, trade route income. Okay, we're getting 12 dust and 12 science, and the trade routes are with ourselves apparently between these two cities here. Alright, cool. So you can have friendly trade routes. And let's have another look at this teal city. It really does look a lot nicer than it did um, at the start of the game, I think. Or maybe the dragon folk uh, always have these really and ostentatious cities. Okay, rooms are done, repairing some of these villages. That'll get us more people to work more tiles. Or work more specialist slots, I guess. Um, yeah, let's let's see what's on the other side of this city, and we'll approach with our other army. Where's that? This guy's way over here. Three turns. So Larsent here is saying um, that, so normally the Necrophages cannot have external trade routes, but there is a hero from the Roving Clans, um, so let's see if he's even available since we are discussing this. Uh, heroes, Roving Clans hero. <clears throat> Okay, so we don't have any heroes from the Roving Clans right now, but apparently there's a Roving Clans hero that has a governor's skill called Black Market that lets you have trade routes uh, with factions that you're at war, Cold War with. And so that'll let, apparently, 
the necrophage of external triggers, which well, sounds cool. Um, okay, so we've got a teal army there. Let's um, pull back. I don't want to fight until I have my other army over for reinforcements. The turn times are getting a little longer. We are at turn 108 now. We've really made some progress and we've met Gloan. He is of the roving clans and he's mildly jealous of us, which I take to be a good thing. Okay, we're back in summer. Now we're pumping uh, our positive dust for turn again. The teal guy is war exhausted. We're about to fight here. Huh. He does, I mean, with the Militia, he definitely outnumbers us. Should I try to fight him to a score uh, the six turns and then run? Or should I retreat, which will um, have all of our guys lose 50% of their health? Well, we can try to fight. I mean, I would, it does mean that I would lose three level three units, but uh, my hero can't die. All right, let's let's try this fight. These guys, they're all infantry, even the militia are infantry. So if we get a good choke point, we can fight them one at a time. Uh, we do have this sweep back strike. Well, let's see it and hope that um, we don't get another combat glitch. Think card three. Yes, this game is absolutely beautiful. Alright, so where do I want to place my people? I don't have a good choke point to take advantage of. I guess we can just move everyone forward so they can deal damage right away. We do have higher initiative. We are acting first. This guy can move in here. That's the two movement. And this guy, if we place him... Can we place him? Ah, we can place them right up against the army. So that'll be good. In fact, let's go and do that with everyone. If we force them to walk around the long way. Yeah, so they can only get through this one tile here. We can fight these guys down and make these guys go around the long way. Meanwhile, uh, our hero can try soloing it. Alright, we'll try with this. Okay, he's got his militia coming in as reinforcements. We'll have everyone go and attack these guys here. And uh, yeah, that's probably fine. Okay, so there is one more bit of room over the top side. I don't have the choke that I thought I did. <clears throat> but hopefully we'll do okay. I mean, they do outnumber us. But I'd like to think my units are superior. Okay, targeting. That targeting is fine as is. This guy's got some sort of a buff that he can offer. Targeting here, yeah, that's fine.
Okay, so that actually didn't go so badly. Our forager here almost died. There was um, just six turns, though. Uh, each combat is limited to six turns, so if you can draw out the fight and you want to escape, then if you can make it last to six turns, you can leave without any penalty, other than the damage you take within the fight. Um, and I don't think we can win without reinforcements. So, if we could go and run away here. Um, looks like we're being blocked off by that army. Let's try to run away, so at least if we fight again, we'll be farther away from the enemy city's garrison, um, and he'll have fewer reinforcements. Hey, Boreal 1. Uh, I'm definitely liking this game so far. It's got a lot of different knobs to turn, and so it could have a lot of strategic depth without actually knowing how they all work and um, seeing if uh, you can adjust all of these uh, different mechanics to uh, great effect or whether or not it's mostly just uh, pointless knobs that don't really have uh, a big impact on the game. I can't really comment yet, still being very new to the game, but it's definitely a beautiful game and I think it has a lot of potential. I really want to see what the multiplayer is like. Um, if the multiplayer is delivered a lot more smoothly than Civ 5, then um, I'll happily spend many, many more hours on this game. Oh yeah, so for those of you who are new to my stream, um, I, I am recovering from a cold. I, I'd like to think that my regular streams I do uh, talk a little more, or at least trip over my words a little less. So if you've liked what you've seen so far, I generally, well, uh, on my YouTube channel I have mostly Civ 5 games, um, but uh, for Twitch I do all sorts of different games. It's always this sort of calm, laid-back type of situation. So if, uh, if you've been enjoying what you've seen so far, please do subscribe, um, either here on Twitch, on my YouTube channel. I also have a Twitter, but um, I think I, I, I don't use Twitter in real life. Uh, it's just the auto broadcast to uh, that Twitch does whenever I go online. But you know, if you use Twitter, uh, do follow me on Twitter too, and maybe one day one of you will teach me what Twitter is all about. All right, so we do have that watchtower. If I get closer to the watchtower, will I heal? We are healing a little faster than I remembered previously, so. I mean, we could attack as is. Let's see. Let's give chase to that army. Where did he run off to? Alright, let's, um... If someone understands how watchtowers work, I'd be happy to hear about that in the chat. But uh, for now, I'm going to bring this army closer. Hopefully we'll heal faster being closer to this watchtower. <clears throat> So, statistical methods, if I build that, will get me plus 15 science on tiles with anomalies. So, we've got the wizard stone. Um, is this an anomaly? No. Glass steel is not an anomaly. So there's only one anomaly in what I'm making my super science city. But I think we do have other anomalies around here that we can be making use of, so... No, that's glass steel as well. And, um, I didn't actually choose the placement of any of these cities. This is a resource. Um, all of my other cities I captured from the enemy AI. Alright, so maybe statistical methods. We do have a lot of anomalies here. We've got mineral rich, mineral rich. Um, the wine extractor is not an anomaly. Titanium extractor. Uh, we can turn the yields off. It's easier to see what the special tiles are that way. I mean, there's the ruby crystal field. I guess physical methods aren't going to be bad, and I do want. Well, 
If we are fighting Loras here, what we should be doing is grabbing tier 3 weapons. Alright, so let's go and do Uncommon Alloys. And then we'll come back home and uh, equip some stuff with the Adamantium and Palladium. Oh yeah, uh, I will go and uh, switch my mic off while I'm chewing. <clears throat> that's a very good suggestion. I think that's something I've done in the past, but um, I was hoping it wasn't coming through too loudly. But that's a good suggestion there. Already in at 1982. Let's see, uh, is there some kind of warmonger uh, penalty? Not that I know of. Um, or if there is, perhaps the necrophages don't suffer from it since they are um, more warmongery than most others. And how is my ranking doing? Right now we have the highest score, so that's excellent. Um, let's go and just capture the city then. I think we've healed up enough here. And we can go and see what the proliferation is all about. So let's go, um, we can siege it first, that's fine. Oh, no, not like that. Um, that was a misclick. Okay, I guess if we want to seize the city, we have to go around this side. Is that what it's saying? Alright, well, next turn, we'll worry about that. Oh yes, that's right. We get an attack bonus for every civ that we're at war with. Maybe I should just go... Um, and declare war on everyone, now that we are... Oh wait, I wanted to siege this guy. Um, siege... Attack appears to be the only option. Okay, so we can siege that. It does have three militia, it's got 150 um, siege strength. I'm not entirely sure what that means, or what the benefit of having that castle number is, but we bring that down by 20 per turn. We'll just have this guy hang out here to heal up. And um, do I have construction going here? <laughs> yeah, Star of Hope. Um, statistical research methods, indeed. <clears throat> Actual bonuses. Yeah, we should go to war with some more people then. Um, do I want a burrow? We're gonna go over towards the geothermal pit. That's six science, or we could get some more dust by going towards the ruby fields. Um, let's get closer to both of them. I think neither of these burrows gets me them right away, but it'll give me the option of going for either later on. So let's go for the burrow. That's 13 turns before I have to worry about anything else. Units can't reach that destination. Okay. Good. Um, we do have... what's this? Proposing a truce, they're going to pay us 161 dust for that. I don't think so. Population is grown, and um, a new policy in a little bit. Ah, and we do have this Madman's Dream quest that we can fulfill here. Uh, do I have some free units over by uh, the capital I can send over? I don't, but I could make one. Um, Let's get another forager, sure. And since we've got plenty of dust, let's switch that over to production. And we can complete that quest. What was our other quest? Legend of the Three, oh yeah. So once we have, um, what is this, Palladian, then we can equip that special weapon and try to solve that quest. Yeah, Boreal One. Um, each of the factions is quite different from the other. Much more diversity than uh, in Civ, where it's just the unique ability, unique unit, unique building. Alright, so first of all, let's look at diplomacy. Do we want to declare war on some more people here? Terrified, mildly, mildly jealous. We would get an attack buff thanks to our 
unique ability as the Necrophages if we do go and uh, declare war on these guys. Um, one reason I might not want to do that, though, is I only have Militia defending my cities here, so I don't really want a two-front war uh, with the green guys sitting right here. What are we even building here? Palladium Extractor, let's go build um, some more units then. Queue that stuff up. Forager. Yeah, that's totally fine. Queue up. Necro drone. Alright, so we'll build the Necro drones far away since they are flying and we can get them to the front a lot sooner. And we'll. Wait, Forager's at the front, Necro drones in the back. That's what I meant to say. Good. Alright, we'll siege the city for one more turn and then we'll go in and- Okay, so there's a unit here who's trying to break our siege. I'm assuming he's about to go to war with us. Um, our watchtower's done, we've got a battle up. But uh, let's deal with our construction queue first. I think we can deal with our construction queue first. No, we'll resolve the battle first. 